even the third game, he didn't die much. Remember what I told you? Ahead. Yeah, this this team, I say that they sometimes they prioritize on Awi a lot and they sack Envy. Like it's sometimes it's not his fault. He's having a hard time. Like his supports are just not helping him. Sure, they are choosing to help the other lanes. They prioritize Awi. Yeah, which I mean, we've already said on the desk makes sense considering how much impact he can have. But I don't, I don't know if you do with the draw ranger though. Only if you're scared of the trial lane, I think it's the only way. And they kind of did dual lanes there. I don't know, but he just seems he's getting it seems like he's getting tilted I mean, to me I, as well. I, either they help him or they give him a better like a better matchup. Or he picks himself a better matchup, like a yeah. lane matchup. Well the draft is underway and you got what you wanted. Immediately looks like the warlock has been yeah. removed. Right, so no more of fatal bonds. So that lets Io in the pool and Io and Ogre. Those are all of NP's other bands in the first round. Four. There's Io. Mm. I, yeah, I, I think you're right, Kev. They, they almost need to give Envy a hero that he can play that's going to give him confidence almost. Like Luna. a sort of confidence boost hero that he can really go nuts Envy with. There you go. So they've got SD Luna. That's very strong. A very annoying mid to that game with the illusions. Yeah. Well, let's see what MEP go for to clear out. The, like, generally, you want heroes that can deal with illusions. Um, like Timber, Tinker. Those are heroes that are very good at killing the illusions. Okay. <laughs> So oh, this is, so this is a classic, this is a very classic pick. They used to do this a lot before. Yeah. The dual lane on your... The Bristol Iron, lane, right? Yeah, Bristol Iron. Yeah, yeah. They pressure your lane a lot. Shadow Demon is not the greatest support anymore in, at level 1. Can't really zone one hero, let alone two. So they're gonna need... They might need another hero that can help them stabilize the lanes. Otherwise the Iron plus Bristol might cause too much problems for them. Was it MVP that ran Bristol Iowa? I think it was TI5. They yeah. would run him a lot of the, in the, in the yeah, offlane. Yeah, that was MVP. It was really, really good. So what is it that makes Bristol Iowa so intimidating, Kevin? Bristol's already really hard to kill, is the big thing with his third skill. Um, and you put an Iowa on top of that, he's getting heals and further reducing damage. Mm -hmm. And he stays alive, he attacks faster, he moves faster. Those are all things that he wants as a hero. Sometimes there's mana problems too. So basically it makes your dual lane very scary. Um, and you definitely can pressure mistakes. Yeah. Like for this lane to work very well, you have to both uh, understand the limits of the hero because generally when you play the IO plus Bristol, you want to go in and make very aggressive plays mm -hmm. at the brink of your death, like dying, and then you, you kill the enemy. And not to mention that Bristol needs a support to stack Ancients. When you do dual lanes like this, there's going to be a hero that can always constantly stack the Ancients. It helps you, you know... It actually helps you clear them as well. Yeah, he helps you thing. clear them in right. fast. You farm really fast from that. So they're so get bigger. very damage empty right yeah, now. This is oh. a, like a, also a classic hero to deal with, like Bristol. You, you take away his armor, makes him very, very sustainable to damage. Yeah, it's good against Io as well, because you can stun both. AoE stun. Yeah. And Soul Catcher on Shadow Demon plus the minus armor on Slaughter means that Bristol's actually going to look a little squishy this game. If they get their skills off in the right Yeah, if they, if they can get it going. But, uh... Yeah, so, but if Bristol is like farm enough, he, he can always get items to you know deal with that, like a Lotus or like sometimes you see like I guess the Greaves would probably be on the IO, but there's always ways to to mm. deal with it. Like I think like if Bristol gets a hit, like he has options to deal with uh, what Slada brings to the table. Do you think it? I mean, the thing is, when it comes to him getting ahead, I know. I mean, Bristol wants to be able to dive people, basically. Like yeah. he wants to get a couple levels and dive you. But with Shadow Demon there, you can kind of disrupt him and and kind of stop him being able to do that. Run, you know. Yeah. You, you disrupt him, you fall back. You can Luna's dis nice dis disrupt. And fast. Like for example, if you have like Invoker, then it's going to be difficult for the Bristol to do that. You can disrupt Soul Catcher into the Sun Strike. Yeah. That'll be really dangerous for the Bristol. Is this a kind of a respect ban taking the sniper out of play? Team. It was a. It's a good, like, I think it's a really good hero right now. Like I think teams have been starting to understand more how to play the hero. I think in the last two weeks or so, mostly when you see Sniper being picked, it's against OD to, to deal with sure. uh, how strong OD is in the laning phase. And in general, in team fights, it's very easy for Sniper to hit the OD. You were having that taken away from him. And we're going to be seeing a Rubik cross up. Silencer ban. The silencer ban is because it's amazing against Bristol because he has to cast cools every three and a half seconds yeah, yeah. so it elongates the arcane curse. That skill is actually really good against oh, yeah, a hero that's, like that. That's true. That one makes sense. That's probably a, a something they've experienced through scrims. Like, oh man, silencer are hard counters. This this dual lane. <laughs> wow, Timbersaw. Another good hero against Bristol back because he's a strength hero and good against uh, the Io as well. Io surprisingly a strength hero. So very yeah. sustainable, uh, susceptible mm. to the Timbersaw damage and the rolling death. Very easy for him to burst him down. Yeah, I really like that pick a lot. So what, you, what, you, what it sounds like to me is that you've seen but, you know, a lot of these picks being influenced by that Bristleback pick. Mm -hmm. You've seen it, yeah. the draft completely kind of shift ever since we did see that picked up in the, in the second. The problem is if you get a Bristleback 
that you can't kill. Right. It drives the tempo of the game so yes. hard that you're just you're just focusing on this one hero that you cannot kill, and he's just running at you, running at you. It's a nightmare. So you do want to shut him down as fast like as you can. Like, I'm right on. Yeah, I win. Certain heroes, certain nice. heroes are like super tanky, but you can choose Thanks, to Kev. ignore him. <laughs> but Bristleback, when he's he's super tanky, but he runs you down and he deals a lot of damage. Yeah. So it's very difficult to ignore a target like this. That's why when you are playing against Bristol, you don't want him to get out of control. The other thing is, because they've gone with the Wisp as well, particularly with the Bristle, if you shut down the Bristle, you're kind of inadvertently shutting down the Wisp as well. So you're shutting down like both heroes, that whole combo, which is at the moment half of their drop. So it, it makes sense. Well, this part makes it easier for them, at least if Bristle gets in trouble, that he can rotate. He can join Sark in a lane, join Bristle in a lane. Um, keeping either alive would be yeah, really important. This is very MVP draft. They have heroes that constantly run at you, they fight, they don't rely on cooldowns. Mm. They just need like some farm, and they're gonna be able to constantly like take fights all I mean, the time. Bristle's still an amazing pick. He's a great Slark counter. It doesn't matter if he's in this; he still blows them up. So yeah. if you Timber mean Timber saw, Timber if Timber's a yeah. really good game, I feel like yeah. the game just ends for MVP. Yeah, Timber saw is really good against the Bristol plus the Slark. Both of the heroes are very weak against Timber. I mean, MVP just really, you know, they have to do a lot in the laning phase with the Bristol IO. Otherwise, I think mid game Luna, like Luna Sa and Timber, are just gonna be much stronger calls against uh, what they have. So it kind of really comes down to the last support pick for MP okay. then, because that'll that'll change their their trial lane really. Like Luna's already very good. Mm. They got SD, but it's a little offensive lacking. I they, feel if they want to kill either either an they IO might, or Bristol, they might they might just go for like something to follow up the disrupt. I think then yeah, exactly. as, as long as you have enough like disabled to kill something that they like a lot is like the Elder Titan. It's pretty pretty good here against their it's, heroes. I, I actually like that a lot. It damage amps all the physical yeah. they already yeah. have and uh, any of the magic from like. It's pretty pretty Eclipse. good against Slark. I think overall that hero is a hero that they play a lot and a hero that fits their lineup right now. And it's really good against what MVP have. Batrider banned fifth Again. round, by the way. Well, yeah. Fifth round is, is amazing. Yeah, that concerned. is. I mean, some yeah. teams just don't really like to play the hero, even though it's a good hero. Yeah, but it goes all the way to, to the end of the draft and then finally continues to be 100% pick and ban. Batrider just continuing to meet that number, a juicy 100. It's definitely not a typical Phoenix pick, but I think what they would have done is do Batrider versus Timber, is why they banned it. Yeah, up they're here. probably okay. yeah they're probably worried about that because Timber is very very weak against Barra in the lane. Mm -hmm. Can't really do much against. And that. It could be like Timber mid or something. You never know. But you know, if if you have Q on your team, you you do not. I I, I wouldn't want to put Q on a hero like this. You don't uh, think Q is a bad hero, a bad player? No, I, I don't think he's a bad player, but I want oh, to. A bat. A bat player. I don't want to waste. Him on a hero like this. I want him to be on a, a hero that it's the best. It's like a shadow fiend, you know. I want him. How, I, how about an Ursa? <laughs> yeah, uh, Ursa will be fine. I, okay. I want him to be on a hero that can carry the game. Well, there it is. Definitely Ursa. It's great against killing Luna. Oh, great against Timber. Timber. Timber is really weak in, against Ursa on the laning phase. So they found it after all of the the banning and the the desperately trying to keep Timber safe. They still find something to get under his skin. So does this make us think that they forgot about Ursa, or that they are more likely to put Timber in a safe lane? Because I feel like Timber versus Ursa mid but is very Ursa They can't favorite, really but... change their lanes anymore. There's Luna. Luna's going to take the safe lane. There's Slala. Slala's off lane. Unless they're going to put Slala as a support and put Timber off lane. They certainly could. Yeah, yeah. actually they could. They could. Lots yeah, of teams could, do that, the, the, the lanes is not very strong. Like Slark and Rubik is not really that uh, strong at zoning uh, off lane Timber. And start up with the Slala roaming around. So, yeah, I, can, mm. I could see that working for them. And you pick another matchup against uh, a better matchup against the Ursa and mid. Invoker is still there in the pool. Oh, yeah, I, I actually and hope. You've got the setup. I just hope that Envy plays something else, you know. <laughs> Anything. Quap versus Ursa, how do you die? He doesn't have a stun, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you just can't die. Yeah, but you can't kill heroes as well. Yes! There you go. Yes! Got it. Oh, Are you an Envy fanboy now? So Is that happy. No more Queen I think of Pain. He just, I think Winter's just like, don't make him play yeah. this hero anymore. It'll it could like... be anybody. It could <laughs> be anybody. Don't make them play Quop, is Winter's thinking. So suddenly, are you suddenly a happy boy now? Are you suddenly going to maybe shift your uh, Yeah, your Invoker's really good here. They have support Slada, which means that they have two mm -hmm. ways of setting up the Sunstrike, the Slada plus the Disrupt from yeah. SD. So I think it's a really good pick here. You just have to not feed mid. Just don't feed mid. <laughs> just That's win, it. win mid. He's he'll against the Ursa, he'll be fine. This is going to be good. All we'll right, see. well, it, well the, the, you guys have helped us set the scene. This draft does mean we're going to have a very intense third map, and the voices behind it are going to be Fogged and Toby. You guys are going to enjoy this one, our first third map on the main broadcast. Of course, we're going to enjoy this. We were enjoying the draft. Fog knew exactly what was happening Ten all the seconds. way through, right? Support Slada. Kind of had a feeling. See it coming from it, a mile away. It looked like a, like a it looked very, look, it looked like a VP draft. It looked pretty much it exactly really what they do. So I was just like, okay, this looks like it's going to be the Slada. And 
it looked like it, like MVP kind of understood that it was going to be a timber off lane too because they picked the Ursa to go up versus the timber in the short lane so they can actually yeah. deal with it with Rubik and Ursa. They don't have to bring and commit three heroes to actually deal with it. And then they can put the Slark mid. It's just a kind of staple for them, you know. They like to have QO like putting the Slark mid even though no one else really does it. Yeah, it, it seems kind of odd like you like you have that that three melee kind of style coming out from from MVP. It's like is it going to work? Like the the only other thing which we tossed up early on was like maybe we look at MVP slipping into Roshan nice and early on. Maybe they can grab it even though it's not as useful. Yeah. Getting getting level two and a half if you can get it just on the Ursa and the Bristle pack. So I just like abandons the pit and give them level two. That laning phase for MVP is going to be so much stronger. I think I have a lot better time. But I, I still want to see what's going to happen with uh, with the Invoker. You were mentioning it with Eternal Envy as we were talking during the drafting phase that he really dislikes going for the Quas Wex, which is really good against a Bristle back and even an Ursa not having that mana pool. Yeah, I'm not, I don't know if he really like dislikes it. I haven't just I just really haven't seen him do it. I think it I think it fits really well with their draft. Like I think the the exhort fits really well with their draft. Obviously, like Winter and I mentioned, they have multiple different setups for it, and it scales much better. You know, it's able to push lanes out in a better factor too. It's able to pressure lanes, and it gives them more more type of push, more objective takers on top of like the Luna, the Shadow Demon, everything like that. Mm -hmm. I, I actually really like this NP draft. It it reminds me, like I said, it reminds me a lot of VP, and I think it's just this, they're on a lot of comfort heroes. MSS Timber saw. Luna, AUI Luna, Envy Invoker, I, I'm liking it. It's it, I think MVP does have a window, obviously, to win this game. You look, duh. But like, I think it's really heavily emphasized on this Bristleback IO lane. Depending on how mm -hmm. they do is going to dictate pretty much everything in every single way that they take fights into the, later, into, uh, like the mid game and after lane stage. And we'll see how M NP actually even pushes their lanes out. Like right now, they're sending all five heroes up to that top lane. So they may have some other more unusual things in mind. Normally when you run that support slaughter that you don't heavily commit to an offline. Yeah, I mean... I think it's like you have Shadow Demon, you go for level one smoke, you try to make a play, at least get some wards down, disrupt the, uh, block the pull, probably disrupt stuff. But Ursa might actually get caught here, he breaks the smoke, they do have an early lane ward already down well, too. They put down their own orbs, uh, but they, and they Velo, see it. Yep, and they there's your disruption. Savage is moving into position for the perfect crush, the Sunstrike is coming in as well, and Velo, he will drop, and that is the Ursa down. 30 seconds before the runes even spawn, and the Ursa is already pushing up the daisies. I love this too. MSS saved the skill point. He didn't go for the timber chain, or he didn't go for the whirling death to try to get the damage out. He didn't grab the reactive armor. He's waiting to decide which one he needs in the laning phase because they knew that's pretty much gonna get a kill. And yeah, they do block the pull. Great, they, they great block level both one camps smokes. by the looks of it. As Dyer also blocked up the camp with their earlier yep. observer ward. Okay. Who ends up getting the last hit too. Oh, and Envy even gets the last hit too. So that's actually pretty huge. Does he actually have anything on the? So he, Pick up the he's, Blightstone. he's bringing a Blightstone early on. So there's there's more potential for him in the mid lane. It is going to be a tough mid lane. Like you're looking at a Slark as well as an Io together. Even if the tether just that just kind of failed from Febby. He's going to move, right? Yeah, he's he's not going to stay there. I think he'll they're move. actually smoking already. Oh, maybe so, they go so for Do a level one Dubu kill. and Febby, they they're looking for Eternal Envy. Maybe they're also thinking about the early courier, knowing that Eternal Envy got. Oh no, they the, want uh, they the want first blood. Yeah, they want it. Kuro doesn't have pounce leveled up just yet, but now with a pickup, the throwback, they can go for the pounce. Eternal He's Envy. Dead. We said it's been a hard time for an Invoker. He doesn't have cost. There's no survivability, and Kuro will get the kill on Eternal Envy. The hard times just keep coming. That's one way to fix when, you know, the, the enemy mid laner gets first blood on your mid laner. It's just like, alright, let's just smoke level 1 kill him. And it works for them, and now the Wisp is going to make his move toward that Ancient. Is he going to make it to stack it? I don't think he will. He's going to be very close. But he'll go down and chew with the Bristle. He's actually going to get it. Yeah, it's out in time. Nice. Perfect timing. So this, this, this is down. MVP being more, uh, and they're going again. They're going on Envy. The leash will go to work. Dubu's still got his control with the pickup, and it's not even oh, required. No. He can save the mana, and a second death now for Envy. They're, they're, they're switching lanes. Savage is, uh, well, not, not completely switching, but they're bringing Savage into the mid lane. That's super painful, though. Like, this is a, this is such an MVP thing to do versus, like, an Invoker or some hero that, like, struggles a bit in the early laning phase. They pick a hero that can kind of just, like, get on his face, like a PA, a Slark. They even used to do, obviously, the PL versus the Invoker, but that obviously completely fell out of favor. And it's, I mean, those two rotations were perfect right there. Like, Envy TP's back in, back in it, dies right away, misses a two full creep wave of experience. Luckily, SVG has a TP and he's able to get that, but... Super painful for your invoker after he gets first blood. Yeah, and he spent the money on the Blightstone, so he's behind in his items. Where Febby, he's now going for the third stack of the Ancients. Already has the bottle up and running, so he just does this. Grabs the two-minute room, pops back down to forever if he can do it. In fact, he's going to tether up with QO as they're making a run as an invis rune. So the greatest thing that Savage could have hoped for. Yeah, denying the rune from bounties is or denying the runes from Wisp is super important. 
make me show you at least try to emphasize checking at least one of them, if not both. But yeah, they get one. The bounty's picked up by Dubu, and now they make the rotation Ooh, down Ferev to the might, Ferev might really regret moving this aggressively over. Potentially they can go into disruption, plus plus the crush. Savage body blocking Febby a little bit, so he actually stuns over on the Ayo. Ayo will tether himself where the creep wave. Ferev's still a tanky enough to get out. In fact, Savage is a little bit more concerned about the mana on the Bristleback. There's not enough to go for more Quill Sprays. Yeah, so Savage Febby's, is out. Febby's still level 1, but... Uh, he's, he's gonna be able to tether up for him and at least give him some mana and something a little, little bit of health too. He's got no regen up on that bristleback. Plus, it's even harder. Like, dude was just being more of a pain in the ass. Fade bolt it down. Envy, just because life isn't great for you, takes more of that uh, that uh, damage away from him and his forge spirits. This is the cool thing too about when you pick an Ursa versus a Timber. So obviously he's an agility hero, so he doesn't get. He doesn't get like crippled at all by Whirling Death, and you're able to leave him alone in that matchup. Rubik obviously emphasized on that super heavily, just ganking in, uh, Envy twice in the mid lane. Now he might make be able to move just to get some levels up, so he's not struggling in that factor. But yeah, Ursta does just perfectly fine in that matchup. The only trade-off is that you know obviously the Timber gets some farm and some levels. That was no, that was just Febby going straight back to base. He was at a bottle charge. Just <laughs> he he went from 100% to zero straight away. With yeah. the amount of Ancients which are already stacked up, and he can just tether back down again and give Ferev all the regeneration that he wants. Yep, TP's down with Overcharge in range of the tower. And what that a time for it, too. Like, it's when MP want to initiate. Like, Rose is on the way out, so they can go for the disruption, but the only choice they have is Ferev, and they know that that's not a kill. And now Eternal Envy may be dead again. He walks down into the river, and the second his feet get wet, he potentially dies, and there's the leash. Gotta hold him there. The Sun Strike's over on Dubu, so... He gets some damage back, but that's now the third death. All three, a hundred percent of the deaths of MP are all on EE. Yeah, Fabi's having great positioning in this bottom lane. They're going bottom. sitting on the side. 4 does get caught by the Soul Catcher here. They do have a decent amount of damage, but he's got his back turned. He's got the Wisp overcharge. He's getting a couple Quill Stacks coming up now, too, and they're prepared from going for that. Like, the stick charges, the Quill Stacks just adding up way too much. You can't really go for that with three stacks on your Luna already. And this this is the reason why they didn't do it before. Like, you saw Forever, you're like, this is, this is a no-go. Like, this is an insanely low percentage chance that you'll actually find that kill. And you probably only went on Forever because he was so far down and you weren't exactly certain where Febby was. I almost want to see one of the one of the guys from NP. They're, go they're going again. They're going, they're going there's, with the there's only stick charges available, so if he wants to tether down, Febby could do it. And he started the tether, but it was too late. So Bristleback will die. Meanwhile, Timbersaw dies on the top lane. Earth's Warrior going hand with Phase Boots. He just ran him down. Yeah, the two points in the Soul Catcher with the Sunstrike on top. The you know amplified pure damage definitely coming into favor there on top of the Bristleback. We see. As always, lots of suicides in the early game, which everybody loves so much, obviously. But yeah, I, I do want to see one of the one of the heroes soon from NP when they get the time to rotate to put a uh, hill ward or a, hill, a ward on the rune at least to watch the movement. Oh, they're from going the again. More TP supports in the way. Dubu's leaving. The supports coming in from Savage, but he's too far away. Can turn on the sprint, but he cannot fight an Ursa. He knows it. Yeah, it's not even that, it's like, when Forev dies in those situations, of course it's not great because he's giving a lot of experience to the uh, supports, which they aren't really getting because they're not able to pull. But, but he has the catch-up mechanic, like he's got a triple ancient stacked already, and they're going to go to do that probably when he's like, level... Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack.
Radiance top tower is under attack. Radiance structures are fortified. Bottom tower is under attack. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Radiance bottom tower has fallen. Dyer's structures are fortified. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Dyer's top tower has fallen. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. Radiance middle tower is under attack. under attack. Radiant structures are fortified. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Dyer's structures are fortified.
Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Radiant's top tower is under attack. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Radiant's structures are fortified. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Radiant's bottom tower has fallen. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Bottom tower is under attack.
Christ! Roshan has fallen to the dark. Radiant's top tower is under attack. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. Radiant's top tower is under attack. Radiant's structures are fortified. Radiant's top tower has fallen. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Dyer's structures are fortified. Dyer's middle tower has fallen. Radiant's top tower is under attack.
Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Invisibility. Soldier's fortune. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. middle tower is under attack.
I'll take that. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Bottom tower is under attack. Radiance middle tower is under attack. Radiance middle tower has fallen. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack.
that. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Dyer's structures are fortified. Dyer's bottom tower has fallen. for me. Top tower is under attack. Radiance. 
Radiant's top tower has fallen. that. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Dyer's middle tower has fallen. Truck help.
Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Dyer's structures are fortified. Dyer's bottom tower has fallen. Bottom barracks has fallen. Dyer's bottom barracks has fallen. Radiant victory! Dyer's middle tower. 